I'm going to show you a different type of bow drill. So if no bent sticks that can be used as a bow are available, you can use a straight stick. So all I've done here is I've taken my saw blade and I sawed a notch about a quarter inch to a half inch into this, into each side. So just a straight notch that some cordage can fit down. That's not required, but it makes it much easier, especially if you have weak cordage, to replace your cordage. One drawback to the Prusik knot bow drill is that it takes a lot of cordage. That's a loop. So I just did an overhand knot here and created a loop. So that's all we're dealing with is a lot of cordage. Now that knot is useful because now I can slide this in to one side. So I'm going to slide this in here and it catches. So I don't want the rope to get bound up. And I'm going to use a Prusik knot to create wraps around the spindle. So I'm going to the inside there. Notice how I'm keeping them separated. Now you could just do one single wrap, but then you're not going to have as much friction. So I want as much friction as I would have with an Egyptian bow drill. So I'm going to do a third one. I'm trying to keep those from getting wrapped up. So the advantage of this is it's very stable. Notice how that keeps the spindle kind of locked in and you can keep them separated like that if you want. But I'm going to bring them together just a little bit so that I can tension both sides down fairly equally. Now this is the reason for that second notch is I'm going to take that cordage and lock it into place but I want it super tight really really tight so I don't have to hold it necessarily with my hand and that locks that into place so for people that have problems with the mechanics of a bow drill when learning it this is a good option but you might want to make it so that it's locked in with a knot so I can put a series of knots in this I'm not going to do that right now unless I have a problem tensioning it or keeping the tension in there with my hand. But I have pretty good grip strength, so I should be able to keep the tension there with my hand. But if I had a problem, again, depending on how strong that cordage is, I could put a knot and then I'm just locking it in that little notch that I created and then overlapping it so I can keep it gripped. So I wanna feel that to kinda of see are those tight? Yes, they are. They have a lot of tension in them. Same technique for any bow drill. Let me grab that. So I want to stand up close to my fireboard. Move some stuff out of the way so it doesn't get in the way. And then I'm going to try to create some dust. Now I don't want too much downward pressure at first. So I can hear that that's slipping a little bit. So I may have to attention the rope so that I don't waste a lot of effort. I'm going to go ahead and tension that. And if I need more tension, I may have to put a knot in there. I don't want any type of slippage. So I've got my coal. But again, look at the stability of that. So if you have a student or a person's trying to learn this for the first time and you're having stability issues, the Prusik knot bow drill is good. It's a good learning tool. You can see we've got a huge chunky coal. 
another good learning tool, I've mentioned it in other videos, is to use a low ignition wood. So create a technique that you can be really comfortable with. This is an option for people that have problems with a traditional bow drill, like the Egyptian bow drill, trying to keep that spindle straight and stable and it keeps popping out. This is a good option. Use yucca, solto, even agave maybe for the spindle. But I like to use yucca on yucca because I know it's a good combination. It's a low ignition wood. It helps students learn the technique quickly without a lot of frustration. And then they can graduate to more diff difficult combinations of wood and build up. 